Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on the channel. Today we are playing Pokemon Evolve Eevee, the game where you play as an Eevee and a Rotom. Let's jump into it. So, starting things off, it explains what you have to do in this ROM hack. You basically have to go around the Messian region and defeat Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon to prove that you are as tough or if not tougher than the Evolutions. You start off in this daycare with your pal Rotom, and there's of course a very horrible Mightyena in the top right corner as well, with his goons, the Poochyena. Um, but I just run around the daycare for a little bit, try and escape. You get a whole Professor Oak sort of vibe. Rotom runs up to you and is like, bro, what do you think you're doing? You ain't escaping this daycare without your pal Rotom. And so he's like, I'm going to join your team. And so we move on. We go left at the very start because that's the only location you can really go. And we find a citrus berry. So berries are very, very useful in this game because there is no healing items. There's no markets or anything like that. You basically just have to use the healing items that you find on the ground. There's also starter Pokemon in the wild, but of course, because there's no markets, you can't catch them. You can't use Pokeballs. You can only get Pokemon in this game through obtaining them to your team as they like join you. A little bit like Mystery Dungeon. Anyway, because we found more berries and I feel like Eevee is not going to be the best one to use, I decide to use Rotom as my main Pokemon because it gets Thundershock. It's a ghost type. It's going to be quite useful. We find a Super Potion as well, which again, also very useful because of the lack of healing items. And Volution Town doesn't really have anything crazy, but it does have a ton of wild Pokemon in the grass. Pokemon like Clefairy, so I feel like it's just time to grind because I still only have a level 5 Rotom. I then find TMO6 Toxic, which is very, very useful because I'm able to now Toxic Pokemon that I couldn't originally beat. So finding that very early on is very useful. And we also stumble upon Vaporeon, the first boss that you have to fight in this ROM hack. And I'm thinking, okay, it's pretty early on in this game. This thing's going to have a low level. It's level 16. I have a level 8 Rotom. How on earth am I going to beat this thing? Luckily, though... It's just going for quick attack. I don't know what program this thing is on. I don't know what it had for its cereal this morning. But it's just constantly quick attacking me. Which is a massive blessing. Um, so I'll just keep thunder shocking this thing. Like this thing is super bulky. Vaporeon has good special defense anyway. So I did not think that I was going to come out of this battle alive. This thing is really really good and competitive. Luckily though it is just sold on quick attack. And it just keeps going for it. And I keep whittling down its HP. However though it does have water gun. And this does a hefty amount of damage. I survive on 2 HP and I feel like it's all over. But luckily, goes for quick attack again. I get another Thunder Shock off and I do beat the Vaporeon. And I'm just thinking of that juicy XP that I'm going to get. 998, level 9, level 10, level 11. Rotom is loving life. And that is the first boss down that early on in the game. It then leaves behind some sort of item. It's just the water stone. I think that's just the rewards that you get for beating the different evolutions. So we put that in the bag and then we move on. I then think to myself, hang on a minute. Level 16, that's way too high leveled. I must have missed Jolteon or Flareon somewhere in the early parts of the game. Because there is also a cave at the start. And so I go check that and everything like that. Unfortunately, I don't find any evolutions, but I do find the TM27 for return, which is a lot better than tackles. So that's going to make Eevee a little bit more of a viable option than just praying that Rotom kills everything. However, though, after searching for ages, I move on to Origin Canyon because I literally just cannot find any evolutions. And I think the level 16 is just the first evolution level. We then find this Hiker dude here, which has a pretty interesting team this early on. Has a level 12 Trap Inch, which is already a bad situation because I'm an electric type and a level 8 Eevee. So, don't know how I was going to do this, but somehow we do. And then he also has a level 12 Bagon with Bite. And I survive on 3 HP and win this battle because Eevee also died to the Trap Inch because it's not doing much damage at all. We get to level 13 on Rotom and then Happy Days. I'm then thinking like, oh my lord, I need to do something about this team. So, I teach Toxic to both Eevee and Rotom. Because if I get myself in another situation where they've got ground types or rock types or whatever, like if we go up against the Geodude, I can't do anything to it. So, I need to have Toxic on both my mons so i can literally just toxic stall these pokemon it's the only way i can get through it's also going to be useful for the evolution battles as well like for jolteon who's an electric type i don't really have anything for that either and especially flareon as well like i just don't have anything for these pokemon so toxic is going to come in very very handy so i do that and then move on and find a life orb However, though, because healing items are so scarce in this game i feel like it might not be the best idea to put this on a pokemon the extra damage is very nice but literally no healing centers anywhere apart from the town so you go a long way in this game without finding any sort of healing this dude whatever reason has the Sinnoh starters 
pops in with a level 13 Turtwig. And I'm like, you know what? I can do this. Let's Toxic Stall it. Get some XP on my Eevee because it's still only level 8, bless it. And I need some extra XP. So luckily, we take out the Turtwig by surviving on 1 HP. And I get a nice wad of XP on Eevee. Not as much as I wanted to. 3, 6, 2, which is still okay. And I try and learn Growl. But I'm like, nah, man. No chance I'm trying to learn Growl anytime today. I actually will get to level 10 as well, which is also very nice. But because he has the Sinnoh Stars, he brings out Piplup. And I'm just like, all right, Rotom's got that in the back pocket. So he just comes in, critical hit, Thundershock, love to see it. And then, of course, finishing things off, he's going to have a Chimchar as well. Really like his team, but these trainers are just popping up left, right, and center. And the worst thing about it is they don't give you any money. I mean, it makes sense because there's no Poke Market, but it's just it's crazy how scarce the healing items are in this game. You really have to use them well. And again, most of the time, it's just Auron Berries and Citrus Berries, which don't give you much HP either. Looking like they're on like a bunch of rocks as well, so that's why you have to literally just click on every single rock. The next time we go into the grass, though, we do find a level 14 Chansey. And I'm like, okay, this is where things start to get good. This is where my look picks up. This thing is going to give me a ton of XP. So I'm like, I'm going to just keep returning with Eevee and hopefully just get a lot of XP. Get Eevee up to like level 13, 14, and uh, we're, we're looking good. So we take out the Chansey and we shoot up to level 12, level 13. And then also I'm trying to learn Quick Attack, which is also very, very useful because just being able to have plus one on the team is very nice. So I do get rid of Tail Whip, which again could be useful, but at the same time, I think Quick Attack will be better. And then I shoot to level 14 and then we find Jolteon. So Jolteon, I thought was going to be a bit of a tough battle because of the whole um, type of situation. Like I don't really have anything for this Pokemon and it's level 21 as well. So it's another jump from level 16. My Pokemon are still like level 13 and 14. So I'm a bit under leveled and it has pin missile. Luckily, I do resist that with Rotom and I do get off a cheeky little toxic and then it's just time to stall this thing um, so I do just keep fighting it astonishing it stuff like that but it does have Thunderfang which even though it is resisted still does a lot of damage to me it does outspeed me as well so astonish isn't necessarily going to get a flinch or anything I survive on 2 HP but he also paralyzes me as well which is also very very uh, unlucky I also survive on 1 HP not 2 HP so we go back into the super potions because I need to some I need something that's going to heal me quick. I'm going to have to use my only super potion in this battle because otherwise I'm going to lose because Eevee's not going to be able to live these and then uh, I just keep astonishing it and just hope for the best. Hope that Thunderfang doesn't get a crit or anything. He keeps going for it. I do get the Astonish off. And then luckily, Poison kills as well. And Jolteon does fall. And we get 1100 XP, which is two levels for Rotom, which is very, very nice. And I'm also trying to learn Double Team. And I'm like, dude, this could be the most awful set ever. Toxic Stalling with Double Team. Like, sign me up. Give me that move. And so I feel like that's going to be very, very useful later on. The cave opens back up. We defeat Jolteon and we do find the Thunderstone on the ground. But of course, there's no healing locations unless I go back to the town. So I'm like, all right, may as well make the long ass trip all the way back down and then go back into the cave. And I'm greeted by a hiker with a level 17 Tropius, which is just ridiculous. This thing was razor leafing me to next year, doing so much damage. But you just have to keep dealing these toxic stores out because it's the only way to take out most of these trainers uh, we then find the quick claw and then also in this little like origin gully thing here there's a rock and there's also the item expert belt so that's also very very useful for a held item but again at the same time berries are just basically the best held item you can use uh, in this game because it's the only way to heal really um, so we're not going to go that way but we're just going to go through this cave and keep going out we make it to the mountain path and so I'm hoping there's some sort of town soon because I need healing. You know, obviously there's berries and stuff, but 10 HP at this point, it's not really doing a lot in battles. So um, there's citrus berries here, um, which again, also useful, but not the best thing in the world. There's also a protein, which I guess is useful, but at the same time, like I'm not really going to use that on anyone. We then find a Gligar and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a horrible battle. I've got nothing for this. You know, I can't use Thundershock on it. And then he's just like, hey, how are you doing? So that, that's literally it. I thought he was going to join my team or something, but no, he's just like, hey, how's your day going? So that's great. We then move up and get stopped by this policeman who's like, nah, Pokemon aren't allowed to pass through here. What are you doing? And then Rotom and Eevee have a nice little conversation about how Gligar may create another cave entrance just like Jolteon did when we defeated it earlier on in the game. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, all right, let's go back to Gligar and see if we can beat it. And this time he does want to actually battle me. He's like, that's a great idea. Let's battle. Let's open up this cave entrance. The Gligar is level 18 though, so I'm like, okay, that's not actually too bad. I'm relatively decent leveled for that, although I don't have anything for it. 
I also couldn't remember at this point if Gligar got Poison Heal or not. I still don't know if it does. Um, but either way, I got the poison off anyway, and it did start doing damage, so hallelujah there. It does unfortunately have moves for me, though, which isn't great. So I do start double teaming, um, and he starts going for Fury Cutter, which, again, does double the power or does, like, extra damage every single time you use it. Um, but luckily, with the double teams going up, I can just dodge every single attack that this thing throws at me. I then also realized that it does have Faint Attack later on, and I don't know why I didn't go for it, but either way, I'm okay with that. Goes for Harden as well, which is fine. You know, just keep letting that HP dwindle down because I need the XP. I need that cave entrance. And then I'm like, I'm going to go into Eevee and get some extra XP because, you know, Eevee's in the back of the party. Doesn't really ever get any XP. And then anyway, we beat the Gligar. And then Gligar's like, bro, I love Eevees. Eevees are underrated. Let me join your team. And I have a Gligar. So I go into my team. It's level 19. Now. I don't know where it got that level from. Uh, but this is a very, very nice addition to my team. It's got Knock Off, Quick Attack, Fury Cutter, and Faint Attack. And then we decide to put Gligar in the second stage of the team just simply because it's um, a little bit better than Eevee. Like, Eevee, even though this game is about Eevee, it's probably the worst mon you could have. Uh, like, Gligar and Rotom are a lot better. So I start healing my team because, you know, I'm not close to a Pokemon Center and I'm just on my last legs. And I start giving held items to my Pokemon as well. Everyone gets a Citrus Berry. And then we move on into the, uh, the top of the cave after saving the game. Anyway, we make our way into the secret tunnel, which I thought was going to have like a ton of encounters in here. But luckily, it was only the one Wisma, which again, isn't great. Like no chances or anything. No massive XP um, boost in this cave. But there are a couple of rocks. And rocks mean Auron Berries. So of course, I'm going to click on all of those. Try and get as many items as possible. I find another Auron Berry here, which I was very, very happy about. And then I just exit the cave. It was just a nice little secret passage created by Gligar. We make it to Central City. So I finally made it to another location with a bunch of rocks. I love those rocks. And luckily, there is another Pokemon Center here as well. I do find a rare candy, which is very useful because levels are a little bit hard to come by in this game. Another Auron Berry here. There's a ton of trees everywhere. I find another rare candy. So I'm like, yo, that's two levels that I can use. Flareon is going to be a very, very high level because if it's giving you rare candies this early on in the game, like this thing is going to be like at least level 30. I do come across another Chansey though, and I'm like, this is fat XP. Let me go into Gligar and body this thing, get a ton of XP. And, uh, and then I go to the Pokemon Center and I can finally heal. I then might make my way into a cave and I find the TM28 for Dig, which again, really useful for Flareon because it's a fire type and obviously Gligar is ground, so I can use that on Gligar. Um, so I decided to teach it to him straight away. Wish I had that when I was taking on the Jolteon because obviously Eevee can learn it as well. Um, but I was like, I'm not going to use Eevee much at all in this in this uh, ROM pack now. So may as well just give it to Gligar and uh, hopefully he can take out the, the Flareon. So I teach him Dig and then I just keep exploring in this cave because I feel like there's got to be something good in here. And I just add the assumption that Flareon was also in this cave. Also, apparently making Gligar your front Pokemon makes him invisible, which is great. Anyway, I make it to this cave down here and there's nothing here. I, I don't know. I think there's something special about these like rocks here, these rugged rocks. I don't know if you can smash them after you beat the game or something, but there's literally nothing here. So I'm like, well, where the bloody hell is Flareon? So I exit the cave, go all the way back. There's like an encounter every two seconds. And then finally, I find the entrance to this forest. So we make our way into Concrete Forest, which is an interesting name for a forest. Wouldn't be the first thing that I'd think of. And we find the TM30 for Shadow Ball, which of course, that's music to Rotom's ears. I can finally get rid of Bloody Astonish and teach it something that actually can do some damage. And so Rotom does want to learn Shadow Ball. Of course, Eevee can learn that as well, which is also very, very useful. But at the same time, I'm like, Eevee's not going to be used. It's six levels below my other two Pokemon. I may as well just use Rotom and Gligar and hope that Flareon isn't too tough. So I teach him Shadow Ball and I carry on moving. I find another rare candy. They are giving these out literally like candy. It's a little bit crazy how many of these you do get. And then carry on moving down and I find another TM24 for Thunderbolt. And I'm like, well, Rotom has just had an absolute Christmas here because he's just learned Shadow Ball. He's now going to learn Thunderbolt instead of Thundershock. And I'm like, where was all of this when I was taking on Vaporeon? Like, I needed this then. So I'm thinking that this Flareon battle is going to be quite tough because if they're giving me Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, a ton of rare candies, I'm like, well, this Flareon is going to be a way, way, way high level. Hence why I've got like three months for this now. And uh, we then find Flareon at the very top of the forest. And he's like, are you ready to take on Flareon? This is the final one. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But then for whatever reason, Flareon is level 19. And I just can't really comprehend that. I don't know if that was a glitch or something. Jolteon was level 21. And then Flareon is level 19. I don't really understand it. So this was an easy win for me. I just used Dig and just one-shot it. And I'm like, that was very, very simple. I was definitely expecting like a big old fat battle. But either way, we defeat Flareon and we do get the Firestone. And I thought, okay, that's the end of the ROM hack. That was a nice little ROM hack. 
But then he's like, hang on a minute, we've got to tell someone. The evolution man is probably the most important person to tell about this whole thing. He lives in Volution Town, and we've got to go back there, and we've got to see what he says about it all. So I'm like, all right, but first of all, I've got to go to Heaven's Peak, which is a location just a little bit north from where you do take on Flareon. And there are a few battles here, and there's some pretty good Pokemon here as well, like a Morwile level 22 with Intimidate. And I'm like, bruh, why can't I find a Pokeball and add one of these bad boys to my team? Unfortunately, there are no Pokeballs, so I just have to run away. And I just have a look around Heaven's Peak. It's literally pure black um, at the top of Heaven's Peak, but there's a rare candy here. Basically, there's just a ton of rare candies here. And I'm like, okay, well, there's going to be some sort of like massive battle at the end of this game, because if I'm just getting rare candies and XP shares, which again, XP share would have been very useful earlier on in the game. I don't know why they give you it at the end of the game, but either way, I go heal up and I make my way back to Volution Town. I save the game because, you know, you can never be too... You can never be too confident with these ROM hacks. Sometimes they just break on you, which is really annoying. And I find the evolution, man. And he's like, oh, what do we have here? And Eevee, pull out my evolution stone. And he's like, bloody hell, where have you found these from? You are a pretty strong Eevee. And he's like, that means you're going to be a powerful one. I want to battle you. I want to catch you. Because that's basically what the trainers are trying to do. They're trying to catch me. And I'm like, bro, it's not happening. And he's got two Pokemon left that he's going to battle me with. And I'm like, bro, what is this guy going to have? And he whips out a bloody Espeon. I'm like, oh, no, what do I have for that? It's level 23. And I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, i got Rotom with Shadow Ball. I'm chilling. So Espeon, hopefully, uh, will die to this Shadow Ball. Does go for the Psybeam, though, which does a lot of damage to me. And I'm like, jeez, that Citrus Berry coming in clutch, though. And then uh, Shadow Ball didn't kill the Espeon. He goes for another Psybeam and gets a Confusion. I'm like, oh, this is going downhill. Luckily, I break through, though. I live on three, and I take out the Espeon with a very nice Shadow Ball, getting a fat 1270 XP. And then he sends out Umbreon as well. I'm like, well, Umbreon definitely is something that I've got to watch out for. So I go into Eevee, Eevee's final battle, and I decide to just Toxic Stall it because Umbreon is a pretty bulky mod. I've not really got anything for it. It does have Synchronize, but that's fine because, you know, Eevee getting poisoned isn't the worst thing in the world. So I poison the Umbreon, synchronize the poison onto me, which, again, is a little bit annoying, but it's just... It's just it is what it is. And then it's just like, all right, what can I do here? Let's just go into Gligar and just keep digging and stuff. Because digging is just going to completely allow the poison to take over this Umbreon. But he just does Pursuit Trap me and just takes out Eevee. I'm like, all right, that was a nice little send-off for Eevee. So I go into my Gligar, come in for free because of the Pursuit. And I'm just like, right, I may as well just start digging and stuff. Because it's just an extra turn of poison. The Toxic Stall is very nice. He doesn't seem to have any potions because he would have used one on Espeon. And so I just keep digging. Umbreon taking the damage. Sand attacks me though, which is a little bit annoying. But I'm like, all right, next turn Umbreon's dead. So I may as well just go for a faint attack for the guaranteed hit. Doesn't kill though. And then pursues me, which crits me. And then Umbreon falls to the poison. And that is the evolution man also defeated, which is very nice. And I think that's pretty much the end of the ROM pack. He's like, that's a powerful Pokemon. You know, I'll make them stronger. I'll come find you later. You can run even if you can't hide. Then he disappears. I save the game. And then he sends you back to the opening. And then Eevee's like, yo, Rotom, what's up? And Rotom's like, oh, Mighty Anna wanted to see you. And I'm like, all right, let me go see what he's saying then. And he's talking about how he's going to pulverize me. That's not going to happen. It's only a level 20 Mighty Anna. I haven't healed since the battle, though, which is a little bit unfortunate. So I'm still a little bit all over the place with my levels. It does have Intimidate. I'm pretty sure I've got uh, Hypercutter, though. I might have Sandville. I can't remember. So I just keep digging for the Mighty Anna because um, this is basically like the last battle in the ROM hack. I take out the Mighty Anna with a couple of digs. Um, but that is basically the Eevee Evolution ROM hack, Pokemon Evolve Eevee. It was a really, really fun ROM hack. Not very long at all. I think it took me like an hour to beat this game, um, which, again, isn't too bad. Uh, but it's not very lengthy at all. I feel like they could have added a couple more evolutions in, which would have been a little bit better, like Leafeon and Glaceon and Sylveon and stuff. But either way, there might be an update out in the future for it. But uh, that was everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider hitting the like button down below. Let me know if you like this type of video more than the usual ones on this channel. Have a great rest of your day, though, and until next time, peace.